Uh, so we're still at home. Uh, the restaurants around here are slowly starting to open back up. Um, I think they might uh, loosen things up a little bit more next week, so we'll see. Uh, but we'll keep on doing these videos for you guys in the meantime. And tonight, uh, by popular vote, we are going to do an espresso rum tea. Uh, so this drink, uh, according to uh, what I found out on the internet, which I don't know if I should believe or not, but uh, it was uh, invented in London. Um, you guys know supermodel Kate, Kate Moss. Uh, hello, there's Joe. Hello, everyone. Uh, so just telling them about the espresso martini and where it came from. Uh, so Kate Moss uh, walks into a bar in London and says, uh, asks the bartender to make her a drink that will wake her up and then bleep her up. <laughs> that sounds like the beginning of a bad joke. Right. So Kate Moss walks into a bar and asks the bartender. <laughs> yeah, so she wanted a drink that will wake her up and, and really mess her up at the same time. And what he came up with was a shot of espresso and some alcohol. And uh, at the time, the drink was vodka, I believe. It was a... Uh, yep. Was it a vanilla vodka or just straight vodka? They don't really they get don't any really specifics. Yeah, the, the history is not that specific. Um, but then, uh, so our first experience with espresso martinis was uh, in all places at Disney World. In, uh, Epcot Center. Yes, uh, in the Italy area. Uh, they have a bar in there that we uh, always go to with our friends. And uh, that's kind of the, the drink of choice. Sort of what they're famous for is their espresso martini. Um, and because it's uh, an Italian place, they try to be really authentic, so they make real Italian espresso there. Um, Which we cannot do. We uh, <laughs> don't have a uh, actual espresso maker. We're improvising, and we're going to you know, show you what we use and give you some ideas. But yeah, they use a real Italian espresso, which makes their espresso martinis delicious. And we kind of got hooked on them. We went to Food and Wine Fest with some friends, went in there, tried one, and, and it was like an annual requirement of our trip to Disney. We had to go into Epcot. Every time we went to Food and Wine with our group of friends, we had to go in and get an espresso martini. Yes. Now, the one problem, though, with those espresso uh, martinis is they were made with vodka. And we are the rum travelers, not the vodka travelers. So. Uh, yeah, we don't really have, I mean, we have, I think maybe there's a bottle of vodka down here somewhere, but we don't drink that. So we tweaked the recipe, and we made it with rum. Yep. And we tried a, quite a few alternatives uh, with this recipe. We always mix it up a little bit because we have a lot of different rums we can use. Uh, so tonight we're going to share, uh, this is our latest mix-up of the recipe. So we'll walk you guys through how to make this. Um, and then we'll give you some alternatives um, in case you can't find these products where you live. Uh, yeah, because I mean the ingredients can vary where, depending on what state people live in and what stores carry the products. Um, a lot of what we're using is readily available in South Florida. Uh, the actual rum that we're going to be using is a little bit harder to find as you go further north in Florida. Um, but we'll give you some options. And if you could find some of our other suggestions uh, or something else that might work for you, we can always go that route. So. All right, so let's get to it. So uh, the first and most important ingredient in an espresso martini, of course, is the espresso. Uh, you want to make this fresh. Hopefully you have some sort of contraption that can make espresso. Uh, now, Joe said earlier, we do not have one of those like $300 beautiful espresso machines. Uh, maybe one day we'll invest in that. Um, but when we realized we wanted to start making these at home, we actually went out and bought a uh, Verissimo machine, which is a Starbucks branded machine. It looks like a Keurig, but it's specifically for espresso. Uh, so they make these little pods. There's different types of espresso. This is a Guatemalan espresso, I believe, that we've got. It says Guatemala Antigua. Ah. So and single origin. I don't think that really matters all that much because we're making it into a rum tea. Yeah. So basically you just want espresso. Yeah. Uh, fresh so, espresso. You don't want to get something that's in a can or, you know, you, you don't want to let it sit for too long because the fresher it is, the better it's going to taste. Yes. And we have it here ready. We ran it right through the machine just before we started recording so it could be ready to go. Yep. Yep. All right. So we're going to use, uh, it's about one ounce that our machine makes. So we're going to go ahead and put that in the, uh, in the shaker. Yeah, we'll go ahead and start making I already put ice in the shaker so we can go ahead and get right into it. Uh, so I'm just going to pour that over the ice in the shaker. And I did the uh, shaker about two thirds of the way full. It's going to make a difference and we'll tell you why in a little bit. Yep. All right. So next up are the rums. Uh, so we've got two rums here that we're using. Uh, the first one here is called Rum Java. Um, you guys will notice I've got a rum java shirt. Um, we, uh, we've had the uh, fortune of getting to spend some time with the um, creators of this rum. 
Uh, they have a few different expressions. Uh, tonight, we, we chose the espresso, um, the, the martini moth, which is their espresso martini coffee flavored rum. We thought it was appropriate for an espresso martini cocktail video yes. to do an espresso martini rum. Yep. Um, so we're going to use, uh, we want this to be kind of the star of the cocktail along with the espresso. Um, so um, if you smell this, it's got, it's got that like, you know, that rich, dark espresso flavor to it. Mm -hmm. um, a little sweet. But yeah, it's, it's going to be sweeter than the espresso. It's got a little bit of um, sweetener in there just to, you know, lighten it up and make mm -hmm. it not, you know what? So it's not bitter. Yeah, I'm not a black coffee drinker. It's a little too bitter for my taste. So I always got to grill up my espresso a little bit, right? Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. he boys his up. I grill my up. <laughs> oh, we like them the same way. So it's to taste. You basically make it the way you prefer to taste it. And uh, we're going to give you some you know, different uh, suggestions on how to tweak it if you like it sweeter or a little more bitter. But uh, basically for the rum, we're going to do go ahead and do two ounces of that rum in the cocktail because we want the, the coffee, the espresso flavor of the rum to stand out more than the sweeter rum that we'll put in next. All right, so it's worth the effort trying to find rum job. I know it's a little bit hard to find. Uh, we can find it in South Florida, like in Miami, Fort Lauderdale, as well as Orlando. Um, I believe there's some places online you can order this. Uh, you can go to the website, rubjava.com, and probably have some information out there. Um, Brian, maybe if you guys are on the uh, video here, feel free to put something in the chat if you have a recommendation for where people can find from Java. And, and again, if Brian and Mindy are watching, I had to make her change out of her blue chair bay shirt into a rum Java shirt because I don't have a rum Java shirt uh, to XL. Wink, wink. <laughs> so anyway, um, back right. to the cocktail. Yep. So if you can't find the rum job, there are several coffee rums out there. We have a couple here we can show you. Uh, of course, the easiest thing to find is going to be Kahlua. And that's how we started making these. There's several different flavors of Kahlua, as you probably already know. There's a mocha flavor, which is a little harder to find out. It used to be everywhere. There's a salted caramel, which is great around holiday times. There's a peppermint, which is perfect for like the Christmas holiday times. Uh, and you could garnish the holiday one with a couple of uh, peppermint leaves if you want. Um, now, Eric, I don't know if everybody knows this. Um, so for the rum travelers, right? Uh, did you guys know that Kahlua is actually rum? Uh, it's a flavored rum. It's more like a rum liqueur. It's a low proof, uh, but it's it's coffee and rum. Yeah, and uh, it took us a while to realize that. We actually bought a new bottle of Kahlua, and they changed their labeling to indicate that it was made with rum because people were starting to ask what li liqueur was being added to it what the flavor, or what the uh, actual alcohol was. Yeah, so it is so rum, base, it is rum which is cool. So you, no one should have trouble finding Kahlua, but no. you can go out of your way and try to get an actual rum, a flavored rum like these. Uh, so the rum java, this is Siesta Key. This is made here in Florida, over in uh, Siesta Key, well technically in Sarasota. Sarasota. And uh, a lot of total wine and liquors carry Siesta Key, so if you have a total wine and liquor in your, in your state, uh, check there uh, in Florida. You can find it at pretty much almost all the total wines. I believe yeah. we have an R. We've seen it in South Florida. Yeah. So Siesta Key is a good one. Um, it's a cold brew coffee recipe, so yeah. it's got a good flavor. It works well in the cocktail. Also, um, at several liquor stores, you can find Shipwreck, really Gold Shipwreck Rum, which is from St. Kitts. It's, um, they have several different flavors, so make sure you pick the uh, coffee one because they also have a vanilla one that's the same color. So it's a, it'll it'll confuse you if you're just looking at the Vanilla color. beans look like coffee beans. Yeah. Not so <laughs> coffee rum, you want to look for that on the bottle. And um, and that that's one, the really gold. And this one's sweeter. Yes. Uh, so if you like a, a you know like if you go to Starbucks and you get like five or six pumps of mocha or vanilla, this is a good one for you because it's nice and sweet. Still got that coffee flavor, but um, definitely a little on the sweeter side. And then um, the last one we're going to mention is Kaloa rum from Kauai in Hawaii. Not to be confused with Kahlua. A lot of people mix that up. Kaloa. We actually went to a bar and asked for Kaloa. I think what kind of cocktail were we ordering? It was a, uh, it was like uh, something with pineapple juice and, and something else. And we saw they had Kaloa rum on the shelf. But when we ordered it, the server misheard us and thought we were asking for Kaloa. And this was a called for a white rum in the cocktail, not not this coffee yes. stuff. Yes. So Kaloa makes a bunch of different rums and. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, she was, the bartender was confused and asked the, the server to go and, and confirm that that's really what we wanted. So she came over, she's like, you guys wanted, you wanted Kahlua, right? And we're like, no, Kaloa. She's like, Kaloa, what's that? So anyway. Luckily the bartender knew once, she, she, once we clarified it made a lot more sense. Yeah, that, fortunately that bartender knew not to put um, Kahlua in with uh, <laughs> pineapple juice and grenadine and whatever else is in that cup. Yeah. So anyway. So
So the oh. coffee is a, it's a very rich coffee. It's delicious, neat. So, I mean, you don't even have to put it on ice. It's so good. Um, we have not tried this in espresso martinis or rum teenies because it's so good by itself. But if you could find this and wanted to give it a try, I bet it would be absolutely delicious. And maybe one day we'll give it a shot. That's another one that's on the sweeter side. Um, so we've got the, the rum java is nice because um, it's it's not very sweet. Um, it's got a little sweetness to it, but uh, not as sweet as some of those other ones. And so it just lets you adjust this cocktail. And if, if you don't want something as sweet, you can uh, it gives you a good base where you can customize your level of sweetness. All right, so that was a long story about <laughs> coffee rum. Not long about coffee rum. We probably have 10 more coffee rums back there we can right. talk about, but we'll move on to the, uh, the next rum. So this is uh, Blue Chair Bay rum. Uh, you guys that know me know that uh, uh, my, one of my part-time gigs um, is a, a rum girl for Blue Chair, so uh, I do promotions for them sometimes. Uh, Joe is actually sometimes a rum girl, he helps me. <laughs> um, but uh, it's a great uh, brand, it's owned by Kenny Chesney, um, a huge fan of Kenny uh, and everything that, uh, that, that he stands for and that he does. Um, and uh, Blue Chair has the, uh, the saying, born on the beach. Yeah. And Kenny Chesney came up with the idea that he wanted to bottle his experiences sitting on the beach in the Virgin Islands and he wanted to share it with people. So he came up with the idea to make his own rum. And uh, there's, I think, uh, what is it, 10 there's different 10 flavors now, yeah. now uh, four or five of them. <laughs> four of them are rum creams and the rest of them are rums, uh, <laughs> flavored rums, and a light rum. Yep. So uh, we're using the vanilla for the, the, a little bit of sweetness in this drink, but it's still rum, so it's still alcohol. Yeah, and vanilla's a good flavor with this. Um, if you guys, you know, if you go to Starbucks or Dunkin' Donuts or whatever your coffee place of choice is, you know, a lot of the you know, syrups you can put in there, vanilla's one of the top ones. Just goes nicely with the uh, coffee and it sweetens up the espresso a little bit. Um, so we're doing one ounce of yep. the Blue Cherry Bay Vanilla Rum. Uh, we've got some alternatives for the vanilla rum too. Uh, there's a shipwreck. We were talking about the shipwreck coffee. The vanilla label is a little bit different. It has the vanilla flowers and the sticks instead of um, instead of the uh, beans. So it does help a little bit with the color, very similar to the coffee. So if you can find the shipwreck vanilla, it's also delicious. We've actually had this neat. It's fantastic. Yeah, it's a little. It's a little richer than the blue cherry vanilla, which is a little bit lighter. Um, and then we have our friend Steve Gubba, who makes Gubba Gold Rum, and this is actually a vanilla rum. We have not tried it, uh, again, we have not tried it in the marquee, but it's something else that you might, ha might have access to, depending on where you live. So keep your eyes open for Gubba, Shipwreck, Blue Chair, Vanilla, or if you can't find a vanilla rum, just use about a half ounce of white rum and add some van uh, extra vanilla syrup. We're going to put some of this to sweeten it a little bit, but you just increase the, uh, the vanilla syrup a little bit to get that vanilla flavor. All right, so then, uh, like you said, this is the last ingredient. We, we did throw this in here um, just because we, we both of us like a sweeter coffee. Um, so this uh, vanilla syrup, this is like what you would find, um, you know, the, the coffee aisle. Um, this is uh, Le Syrup de Moni, French <laughs> vanilla. I don't know if I said that right. Um, but you, you can use simple syrup. You can make your own simple syrup. You could probably make your own vanilla if we had the time. Uh, yeah. But we have some of this handy, and uh, it, it definitely it's a nice app. Uh, nice addition to the cocktail just sweetens it up a little bit. Yeah, again, it's just it's something you find in the uh, coffee bar and also like your, where they keep the mochas, the uh, different flavors to add to your uh, quarter ounce. Yeah, quarter okay. ounce. Okay, yeah, it's a quarter ounce of that. I couldn't see how much he was putting in there. Uh, and like we said before, a strong vanilla aroma, so you don't want to overdo it. Yeah, don't don't put an ounce of that in there. It'd be a, a, it tastes like a candy bar. Um, but if you like candy bars, go ahead. Do it. Uh, but we found a quarter ounce is just enough to bump it up. Oh, yeah, to make it a little bit more sweet. Yep, so uh, one of the things we're going to do is we're going to give this a really hearty shake. You want to make sure you shake it really well, vigorously. You want to get to the point where your hands are starting to get numb holding the shaker because we're going to build up a froth inside the, the, the shaker. So when we pour it in the martini glass, it actually has a nice foam on top. So let me give it a good shake. Bear with me for a second. It's going to be loud. I might, I might go here, so maybe I'll shake it down here if it's not a while. Shake it and shake the shaker because the hands get too cold. Yeah, I think I'm going to put that previous figure out the way of it. It's too cold. It's too cold. It's too cold for me. I don't know how to do it, but props to him. 
All right, so we got a nice frost developing on the uh, shaker there. And we are going to point out here that our martini glass has been sitting with crushed ice in it. Uh, this basically chills the glass so that your martini is nice and cold. Your rum martini is chilled when it's coming out of the shaker, and the glass is chilled so it doesn't take any of that chill away. So we're just going to dump that ice out over there. Yeah, you got your Oh, it was all in one, one chunk. We made an iceberg. Froze together there. So don't leave your ice in there. There's no ice in this, this drink. Martinis are just by themselves, no ice. And before you put it in there, let's talk about this fabulous glass. Hopefully you guys can see it. We love these. Uh, these are our tentacle martini glasses. I just think they're the coolest thing in the whole yeah. world. Um, Looks like an octopus tentacle holding up the top of the glass there. Yeah. Uh, so we bought these at SeaWorld in Orlando. Um, so if you, they're not open now, obviously, once things open back up, um, be sure to stop in SeaWorld if you want to get one for yourself. So before I pour this in the glass, I want to say sometimes if you're having people over and you want to make this a little fancier, you might take a little bit of chocolate syrup and just drizzle it in the glass to give it kind of a fancy craft cocktail kind of a look. So I'm just going to give this one more little shake yep. and then pour it in the glass. Go ahead and pour that in there. He always makes a mess. It's the shaker, not me. I know, I know. So see that foam working its way to the top. And one of the reasons you want the foam is because we are going to garnish that with three espresso beans right there, floating on the top. Perfect. Actually, I'm going to see if I can bring that up to the camera. Oh, he's a brave one. show you how pretty oh, that is. Nobody wants to walk around with a martini glass that full. <laughs> well, what do you think? How does that look? So, uh, we got to save it. Yeah. We did. We made one up earlier. Oh, I get the first taste. You get the first taste. Yay. The hardest one in the full martini glass. Turn out good? Yeah, these are these are nice. I mean it's ice cold. It's it's got that rich, fresh espresso taste to it. This is like our go-to cocktail mm -hmm. if we're gonna go out like on Friday nights. We've been up early working all day or this is, long. This is the pre-game cocktail. Oh yeah. This so, is what you have what, when you want to get that boost of the espresso and get ready to go out and have a good time yep. and kick off your drinking. So, Absolutely. Yeah, so because it's a martini, you know, it's a pretty strong cocktail too, so that doesn't hurt. Uh, get your night going early. Yeah, I mean, literally, the only thing that's not alcohol is that quarter ounce of vanilla and the shot of espresso. The rest of it is rum and rum. Yes, so, Yeah, please, go yes, for it. But yeah, let's, uh, let's take a look and see if anybody's asking questions in the uh, chat here. Actually, we've got a lot of comments going on here. All right. Everybody's having fun on Friday. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, Brian is watching. Hi, Brian. <laughs> so, uh, Thank you for the rum. <laughs> and he did say rum, rum Java is available in eight states. The British Virgin Islands, U.S. Virgin Islands, and Broadway across the U.K. Um, and available online in 35 states. Oh, that's so great. That's, that's a pretty good access. If you can't find it in your store, uh, see if they can order it for you or see if you can get it online and ship to you. So thanks, Brian, for that info. And Rum Java for chiming in there. So um, what else we got? Hmm. I've been asked to put on the tank top. Oh my. I don't know if that's a good idea. No. no. <laughs> Maybe a little revealing on show. Uh, Paul actually chimed in and said Tia Maria is also a good substitute for the oh, coffee. Oh yeah, Tia Maria. Yeah. yeah, we actually uh, we attended a little seminar they did at Tells the Cocktail uh, last year. The year before was a seminar. Last year they did a little sneaker shop. That was fun. Uh, but yeah, Tia Maria is another really good one. Uh, I think Tia, Tia Maria... I remember if that's, it might be a little stronger than Kahlua. Yeah, I think it's got a little bit stronger of alcohol content. Yeah. And one thing we didn't mention, but it's very uh, a very good point to note, is that you can't always find coffee rums in the rum section. Sometimes they're in the cordials, mm -hmm. and sometimes there's an exclu or a specific section uh, where all the coffee products are, where it's the, the, the Kahlua, the coffee rums, the Tia Maria. Yeah. So it's all grouped in one spot instead of in the rum section. So keep on the lookout for that. If you can't find it in the rum section, Take a peek over in the cordials and see or, or see if they have a coffee section as yep. well. Um, what else have we got? Uh, Mindy's here and uh, getting some good representation from the Rum Java folks. So good to see you guys. Thanks for joining us. Uh, let's see what else we got here. <laughs> uh, yes, we do need a new bottle of Rum Java. That is true. It's getting a little low. Yeah, we have a, we have the signature up there. So until there's a, I think there's six of them all together, right? Uh, the one that I really love is called Cacao Mom. So like the name suggests, it's got kind of a 
chocolatey note to it. I thought about using that one, but I'm like, well, we'll keep it kind of strictly just to espresso tonight. Um, well, again, you don't, you don't want to stray far from a martini man, yeah, an espresso a martini, martini flavor rum when you're making an espresso martini. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm a mocha girl. I love anything like dark chocolate flavor. So that, um, that cacao on is, is some yummy stuff. And uh, going back to the uh, holiday drinks, so we've done it with a peppermint Kahlua, which is yep. delicious. It's great for the holidays. And you can garnish with a candy cane. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also have our own peppermint outside. We can throw a couple peppermint leaves on top just to make it pretty. Um, there's a, what is it, a sweet chili Kahlua, if you really want to get adventurous. I mean, I'm, I'm, we're probably not going to like uh, travel down that path too far, but um, I'll take another sip here. I know, it's so good. These, the, the problem with these drinks, though, is um, they disappear so quickly. You just, they go down so easy, and you just, it's going to be gone before you know it. We and spent more money than we intended to at that little bar in Italy at, at Epcot. It's uh, very easy to drink a lot. You're way to these. So, um, yeah, you know, I, I, I absolutely miss Disney. We have annual passes to Disney, so we go there a lot. Um, but, you know, I, I kind of don't miss the uh, pricing at the bars <laughs> at Disney. Um, these drinks are like $17 now or something. And I bet all of these ingredients together cost as much as one of these espresso. Well, this bottle of rum is about $16. Uh, the rum java, I want to say, is $25. If I were, it's been a little while since we bought it. Yeah. Something in that um, range. That um, and the syrup's usually like seven bucks. And then the the box of You're going to spend your money on the espresso maker. Well, that's, yeah, that's it's just a like. maker if you don't have it. But the pods, it's like a box of, I don't know, 15 for like 10 bucks, a uh, bed, bath, and beyond. Mm -hmm. So, you know, all together, yeah. it's probably going to make like 10 cocktails at least. That's something we were going to talk about is the uh, what you use to make the espresso. Um, I don't know for certain whether or not Keurig has espresso pods. Um, there's the barista mill from Starbucks that definitely has uh, espresso. Or espresso, and if you have an espresso maker at home, of course, that's just the way you want to go. It's going to be fresh, uh, depending on where you get your espresso uh, beans ground and, and everything for your espresso maker. Uh, so an espresso press is is your top of the line, yeah. and then you go for Starbucks, and then probably the Keurig would be below that. Yeah, like I said, this was uh, our introduction to the cocktail, and we bought that espresso machine just so we could make these. Not because we drink espresso like on a regular basis, mm -hmm. just so we could make this drink. Uh, but this, I actually, I never drank coffee in my life. I never liked it, uh, you know, tried it a few times, just never liked it until I had this drink. And I was like, oh, well, that's really good. Maybe, maybe I might like coffee. And uh, so I tried a few variations of this, and then I took the big step up to Starbucks, and I, uh, you know, had my, I did ice mocha there is my, my drink of choice. He's a salted caramel guy, yeah. mocha girl. I just like the saltiness of the salt and caramel. It's not so much the sweetness as the salty, it's just something about it. Yeah. But this is better. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Starbucks will, uh, won't make this for you. But at, if you're at Disney, when, when things reopen, you go to Joffrey's, which are this yes. little uh, little carts. Not a cart, it's like it's a like little coffee stands that are around the different parks. Yes, and uh, you can add yeah, your choice of, of decors to your coffee there. So that's, mm -hmm. that's a good way to do it if you don't want to. Make Made in line at the, at the Italy bar. And make your own boozy iced coffee at Disney, yeah. basically. It's an important uh, way to start your day. If you're gonna, if it's a crowded day at the park. And, oh, it's so weird to like, talk about it now, but it's going to be very different, I think, when, uh, when, when we get to go back. It's not going to be like what we've known no. for all these years. Yeah, it's going to be an adjustment. It's going to be, as they keep saying, a new normal. Um, I don't know if we'll ever get back to the old normal, but there's, uh, there's always hoping because uh, I was listening to a song today and uh, I miss hugs and handshakes. It's just, you know, the, the song really summed it up. Miss seeing, we can hug each other, but yeah, it's uh, the new normal isn't going to be shaking hands when you meet somebody for the first time. It's not going to be, you know, hugging everybody when you walk in a room, but uh, I'll probably still do it because that's just me. But, um, but anyway, yeah, like with, uh, with everything like going on, uh, I hope these videos are, are giving you a little bit of a smile about on Friday nights and a uh, new cocktail to try at home. Yep. Um, Missy and I have really uh, enjoyed doing this and uh, I don't know if you can tell if the lighting and the sound has improved at all. We're making upgrades to our systems, our technology, and we'll continue to improve as long as we're making these videos and uh, trying to bring this fun stuff into your homes. Anything you want to say? Uh, let's just check one more check for questions. Um, if not, we'll wrap it up and uh, probably make like 10 more of these espresso martinis. <laughs> <laughs>
Yep, I don't see any questions. There's a lot of funny comments in there, so if you get a chance to read through them, we've got some great people in our in our video right now making comments on it, and uh, they're they're always fun. We miss hanging out with everybody on the regular, so looking forward. Oh, we've got a visitor. Our cat has decided to join us, so I think it's time to say good night. <laughs> so I think he likes an espresso roti. I'm going to let Missy close us out. Good night, everyone. All right. Well, thank you guys again for your support, for watching our videos, for your comments and your feedback. It's all been, um, like, super supportive and, and helpful. Uh, we appreciate it. So I uh, hope you guys enjoy the rest of your Friday night, and uh, we'll see you next week. Bye.